Stokes has got his groove back. Samson's got his strength back. Dorney's got his smile back. KKR want DK back. Punjab, well, they refuse to go back. Sunrises, they've started a comeback. Sky has got his own back. Gawley just keeps staring back. And Dilly, well, Dilly want their money back. It's all happening this week on the IPL podcast for the Bharat Army. And look at the packed house we've got for week six. It's all going all over the place. Up is down, left is right. Everything that we thought was going to be all in order has all been turned upside down. So let's see who we've got on this week's podcast. We have joining us yet again, everybody's favorite Punjabi from across the world. He's the number one favorite Punjabi in everybody's hearts. It's Anmol. Satsriya Kaal, Anmol. Satsriya Kaal, Ash. I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Very good. Uh, we also have joining us this week representing RCB. We've got Varnata. How are you doing, Varnata? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. The RCB flags are still flying for now. We've got returning this week. <laughs> We've got returning, we've got representing Delhi Capitals. Ahan, how you doing, Ahan? Surviving these days, <laughs> just about. Those are the words of a broken man, everyone. The words of a broken man. Uh, representing uh, Kolkata Knight Riders, we've got uh, Abhijit. How, you, how are you doing, Abhijit? Jeez. I, I am doing good, good on a personal note, but my team has to do good and other teams have to help our team. Well, as long as you're okay on a personal note, that's all that matters. Uh, we've got representing the Rajasthan Royals returning this week as well. We've got Sanjit. How's it going, Sanjit? Yeah, it's going good. Uh, I'm actually stoked to come back on this podcast today. Oh, I bet you are stoked. Jeez, yeah, I bet you are. Uh, right, we've also got uh, returning. Uh, who, who here likes crunchy peanut butter? Anyone like crunchy peanut butter? Well, I can tell you that Naresh, he only has smooth. Because, of course, he is the man with the smoothest voice in the whole of the Bharat Army. Naresh, representing Mumbai Indians, how are you? Thank you. I'm, I'm good, Ashish. Good to be back. Sitting on the top, looking down what's going on. So. Yes, I do remember a certain <laughs> Delhi Capitals member uh, using those same words in our first week. Wow. <laughs> Long time ago, that seems, sitting on top yeah, of the table. Aerial view. Taking an aerial view, yeah. Aerial <laughs> view, yeah, of course. Like a drone, checking everybody else out. Uh, we've got representing the uh, Jedi Super Kings. We've got Neha as well. How's it going, Neha? She's smiling. She's yeah, smiling, smiling finally. Smiling, happy, no stress. Good to uh, play a spoil spot and, and making it difficult for others to qualify. So you know, we are in a good position overall. Yes, be the team bully. That's what we want. That's what we want. And joining us to make his podcast debut this week, we've got Rakshit, who is the founder of the Orange Army, the Sunrisers Hyderabad Supporters Group. How are you, Rakshit? Fine. I'm great to have uh, in the podcast, you know, with this amazing people. They are all amazing. You are right about that. I would agree wholeheartedly with that. So let's get into it, shall we? Week six. Wow, what a week this has been. What a week this has been. Uh, you can already see some heads lifting, some heads dropping, but let's get into it. Bottom of the table, shall we? Uh, Jedi Super Kings, starting off with Neha at the bottom of the table, but you know, we kind of knew the lay of the land anyway. Um, Neha, I've got a question for you. Where did this Jedi Super Kings team come from and where have they been for the entire duration of the tournament? Sleeping. <laughs> I don't know, but exceptional performance against KKR and I think defeating RCB I mean see defeating top two teams or top two teams is always like a good confidence booster like so I was actually shocked I mean see it's always good to go out of the tournament with pride and kind of winning the last three four matches whatever we have though we've kind of technically mathematically qualified out of it but oh my god what performances from the youngsters uh Guy Kvad, exceptional, I think, in both both the matches. And I think he was he was one of the players who tested positive at the start of the tournament. And I think eventually he got through there and scored some good runs. Even Sam Curran, I think he has been this superstar of CSK this entire season. We I still think we could have utilized him much better and promoted him up the order, but nevertheless, he's doing good with the ball and the bat both. So, yeah, I don't know where this team was, but it's better to be late than never. Hope this momentum is carried on for the next few months and we kind of take this ahead. Probably give, as I said last time, rest all the senior players and get in all the youngsters just to experiment. Well, you know, obviously the, the table is kind of set for Chennai Super Kings now at the moment. It looks like you obviously will finish last this year. However, 
Um, Jedi could decide the fate of many teams, it seems. So they are they are holding that. Uh, look at that. See, look, you've got you've got Sanjit now waving the Jedi Super Kings shirt. You know, uh, a lot of people are becoming Super Kings fans. Um, so, um, Neha, what would you like the Chennai Super Kings to do for the remainder of the tournament? Uh, we would like to firstly beat Punjab today, get them off. I think if, if we beat them today, they are on fifth or sixth, if I'm not wrong. They will remain below the four point. Uh, I personally want SRH to get the fourth position. So, if they beat Mumbai Indians, they are at their at fourth uh, position as well. Uh, we, I have also actually noted down like Sanchi because it's a very uh, difficult permutation combination who, who wins, who loses, and NRL and etc. But I want us to beat Punjab today, so they are finally knocked off. Last four five wins, it was good, okay, but theek hai, we ho gaya, go off. What, what have you got against Punjab? Why don't you want them to go through? <laughs> because I want SRS to win and cover the fourth position. I think they they have been a better team in the last previous games. And maybe in the initial stages, they fumbled kind of, but I think they picked up pretty well. Uh, so I want, and also Kane is in uh, SRH, so I want that team to kind of rise ahead. Well, I was going to say, I, I was going to say that Rakshit, you're, you're smiling over, over there. You're quite happy about it, but don't be too happy. She wants your cane. She, she wants your <laughs> cane really hard. It's not possible, actually. <laughs> He's our future star. Is it? Well, well yeah, Easy. I'll have to... Yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah, uh, what what else does your mathematical uh, equations today show us, uh, Neha? Uh, I think other than that, we play important for uh, we. I mean, we play a very crucial part in Punjab's loss, whatever today losses or win today. Yes. Apart from that, I think if Punjab wins today, they are at number three, and if RCB loses. They lose that spot. Correct me, Ahan, if I'm wrong. I mean, I've tried to do some plus minuses, but it's very confusing how they hurt. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be hearing a lot from Ahan today, uh, everybody. Yeah. He, I'm I'm making him the official co-host of this podcast today because he has uh, done the maths for us, uh, and he's figured out what every team needs to do. So as we're going along, uh, we'll be we'll be hearing from him a lot because Lord knows I got a, a C in my maths in GCSEs, and I chose not to go near numbers ever again for the rest of my life. Uh, a failure to my parents' eyes, but hell, I didn't care. Um, so, uh, you know, usually we spend a lot of time talking about CSK every week. They're a big topic, but I think let's just move on now because obviously the rest of the seven teams have all got a chance of qualifying still. This is a bonkers IPL this year where all of these teams can actually qualify. So, seventh position, we're going one up to the Kolkata Knight Riders and to Abhijit. Abhijit, in the first week, you started off the podcast because Kolkata's were right at the bottom. However, now you are in the seventh position. So what do you think about this last week for Kolkata Knight Riders? Once again, that uh, same problem, uh, that batting collapses from which uh, KKR batsmen could not regain the strength. And uh, they just somehow get a semi-par score or just a touch par score from where bowlers are trying their level best to give KKR something. And uh, the, the, the last match, KKR should have won it by basically because, um, I mean, that is the margin. Uh, margin is very less. The one uh, ball from Loki, it went for no ball and all. I don't blame Loki for that because he was the only one who could uh, bowl those uh, exact Yorkers for which he did the first three balls. So, last match, uh, I will definitely say luck was not in our hand. And um, KKR is always batting first, uh, whether they are, they are also losing tosses. So KKR strength has not been batting this year, uh, but still they are not, luck is not in their hand. Uh, but uh, of course, I can't say everything to the luck. Uh, KKR batting collapses is the main issue of KKR, why they have uh, found themselves. I mean, from a, a point where there was a clear gap between the top four and bottom four. Uh, so KKR has uh, really made it difficult for themselves to Qualify because uh, before two weeks, KKR were in the contention for top two spots as well. But at the moment, uh, this year, the unsettled batting order, uh, it's very confusing at the moment. Yeah, the batting order really is kind of where it's all gone wrong a little bit for uh, for Kolkata Knight Riders. Uh, I, I tried to decode a bit. Uh, uh, what, what did, what did you decode was, from that video? What did you find? Uh, actually, the thing is, what I, I mean, the way I follow, I'm not an expert. I just try to go to their KKR's uh, meeting videos and all, whatever they upload in the YouTube. And I got a chance to be, I, I was one of the winner of KKR Fan Tank 
contest before last year auction so i got a chance to speak to our analyst uh, ar shrikant as well uh, so many of the fans wanted uh, uh, chris lin to be purchased back for a lesser amount but what i found was uh, uh, andre russell is injury prone same goes with chris lin so earlier chris lin used to be so good against pace because of his uh, australian uh, because he grew up in australian pitches and all so he used to counter the fast bowlers and uh, sunil narin used to take care of the spinner but this year uh, shubman gill what i saw is i mean shubman gill definitely the star of the future but uh, he could not counter attack on his own in the last to last match also or uh, till the time morgan was there he looked uh, like one uh, step uh, upward kind of batsman but once he got out he was just giving singles to the uh, uh, new guy kamlesh nagar kote so kkr batting was built up between three players narin was the floater chris lin and andre russell right now nobody is there in this kkr batting order and god knows why because chris lin the kind of batsman he is they got a same batsman like morgan to contribute in the middle order but uh, he is not coming i mean in uh, such a crucial match it's very disappointing to see kkr uh, sending rinku singh i mean no offense to rinku singh he has an inspiring story to tell but uh, rinku singh i mean i mean this is already 13th match and morgan has not batted where he is so good at yes well um you know one bit of uh, good news for uh, kolkata night riders this andre past russell. week obviously uh, well andre russell is one but uh, another one if we just look at the the bigger picture for the time being is that the uh, the india squad was announced to uh, to tour australia uh, in this last week and well, varun chakravarty has made it into that squad uh, what do you think about that selection uh, it's i mean it's very uh, good news for us because two of the indian uh, spinners i mean of course they are playing one at the moment only varun but kuldeep yadav and varun chakravarty and shubman gill these three uh, indian players are only these three indian players are playing in kkr squad so varun chakravarty is the i mean along with devdat padikal and all the players he is one of the find of this ipl because we talk we spoke so much about him in last one or two years finally uh, after his injury and his architect tenure and whatever he got to show his uh, proper skills i mean in the last match against csk you don't get uh, ms dhoni bold uh, like twice a year it, it, it is really an achievement and uh, the googly shar googly ha uh, yeah month. because <laughs> okay because um, i mean those those kind of uh, uh, skills that he has brought into because if you see his wicket because we have not taken much wicket in the power play uh, we, i think i don't uh, look at stats too much but whenever it comes on the live feed i see kkr power play wickets as uh, at the rock bottom along with some rajasthan or someone i don't correct me if i am wrong so he is the only one who has taken a lot of wickets for kkr from which i mean i'm sorry to say this but uh, whatever the buzz is kkr should not have won two matches against punjab and csk it was because of his bowling and uh, one two death good over or good over of death bowling from rashel narin and forgusan and one good over from there only we have won matches so of course varun chakravarty is our biggest match winner in this season so far Yes, indeed. Yeah, and he uh, he gave Shreya Sire quite the uh, send off as well in that in that Delhi match. I wonder how they're going to get along in the uh, in the India setup. Um, so Abhijit, uh, I'll probably bring in Ahan as well at this point. And if you and Ahan just tell us uh, what do Kolkata Knight Riders need to happen or need to do in order to qualify for the last four? First of all, I am Chennai. I am today. It's whistle podu for me. First match. <laughs> I say, I mean, after what uh, Jadeja did to us, it's very. disappointing to for me as a kkr fan to support against csk then i think uh, i am missing sid at the moment i want that confidence from him like mumbai should beat uh, srh well you know you, you'll, uh, you'll get that confidence from naresh as well i think yes <laughs> so know, and mumbai. one more uh, uh, if srh is losing one and punjab is losing one then of course we have to beat last match i supported rr uh because uh, they had to win that one for uh, uh, other team to get less so last match it's uh, up to us and rr whoever wins that team will go naresh go for your it. i think uh, kkr's nrr is still low right even if you yeah but uh, we yeah. have to prevent other teams to get 14 points for that so if csk wins today punjab won't uh, reach 14 and if mi wins tomorrow srh won't reach 14 so 
Uh, actually, I have a collection of lot of jerseys, Sanchit, but I'm not able to find it right now. <laughs> I am also supporting Panj. I mean, it's a no, very. She just a comment for us. both uh, the CSK and KKR. They need to get their best out today. You know, get Watson and Faf back on the top, and a fit Andre Russell get him back. This is the last opportunity for both of them to do whatever they want to do to you know turn the tables around. And Morgan at number four. Yeah, Morgan yes, at four indeed, was yeah. from the first game, you know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Ahan, go for it. Uh, yeah, a couple of things. I don't agree that Watson and Favre should open. I think Gaikwad has done exceptionally well. You need to leave him up at the top to open because he's an opener by trade and he's played really well. So he needs to carry on opening. I think they'll play Watson because he's made it pretty clear he's not coming back. So they'll give him a nice like final game. Go hit a 50-60 and whatever. But yeah, in terms of like qualification, uh, KKR, or like uh, Abhijit said, KKR... Ideally for KKR, they win today and then neither uh, Hyderabad or um, these guys, who are, Hyderabad or Kings, uh, Kings sure. like win so that they end up on 14 as the only team along with Delhi, Bangalore. Uh, but they can still qualify in another way. Like there are, there's one or two other ways they can qualify. So basically, if they win today by a pretty decent, they need to make sure that their margin of victory is pretty decent today. Like if they're batting first, then at least like 40, 30, 40 runs. And if they're chasing, then chase it down in 16, 15, 16 overs. And then if they do that, then there's two possible ways for them to get through. Because if they win by a good enough not net run rate to take over higher Punjab, even if they win, that's possible, but very unlikely. But the other thing is, whoever loses in Delhi RCB, their net run rate is only going to get worse. So yes, if King indeed, 11 yeah. managed to, if King 11, I mean, if KKR managed to win that, win their game today and cover their net run rate to cover whoever loses the Delhi RCB game, then uh, they can go through as the fourth position if given that King, uh, Sunrisers lose. Yes, indeed. Yeah, well, you know, looking, looking at the table, I always compare Kolkata to, to movies on every week for some odd reason. I guess Shah Rukh Khan's their owner. But going up in the table, I'll tell you what, Rajasthan Royals, if they were a movie, it would be Kabi Kushi Kabi Gum because, you know, they've put you through a lot of gum this year, uh, Sanjit. However, you're coming to, into a lot of cushy at the moment. Let's just talk about Ben Stokes and his uh, re-emergence from out of the ashes. Believable. I think uh, before the MI game, uh, I don't think anyone uh, from the Rajasthan Royal fans believed that this team could do, uh, like, even finish fifth. Uh, no one expect us, uh, expected us to beat MI, especially at Abu Dhabi. But the way Ben Stokes played in that game, I mean, to score 100 under immense uh, criticism, that was that was simply amazing, and also he backed it against Punjab. Also, he took like uh, two for thirty-two, and that brilliant catch in the first over, and then went on to just score fifty runs. I mean, that is the Ben Stokes which we wanted to perf- perform consistently. But apart from Ben Stokes, we also have the rising form of Sanju Samson once again. I mean, the last three games, I think uh, he has played exceptionally well, and along with that, uh, Robin Uttapai has been giving good starts for us. So. Uh, well, while looking at the batting, I think we are looking really good. But the only concern is the balling. I mean, Jofra is doing what he does usually. But the thing is that he's not getting enough support from the other end. And I think that spinners are balling re- uh, well, but not getting enough wickets. But uh, the main concern is who, are, who is going to partner Jofra. I mean, Stokes, Stokes did really well against Punjab. But uh, we really want uh, someone like Tiagi or even Aaron, if he plays, uh, they need to be stepping up and taking wickets and not consistently uh, go for runs. So that is the biggest worry uh, while we face KKR. So if we lose the toss, then it would be interesting to see what we do. And I think for qualification, I, uh, I think it's similar to what KKR has to do. But the, the only difference is that we have a better NRR than KKR. So that would make it a bit easier as compared to KKR. But yes, uh, First, uh, I, today I am a CSK fan. Whistle for to die hard, and <laughs> really hoping that MI beats SRH also. So, the only regret that I have is that at this stage it's not in our hands, and I think it's fair that uh, we blew a couple of games earlier in the season, and because of that we are in this position. But uh, would really want us to uh, end the season on a high with three wins in a row. So. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you kind of look back at this past week and to be honest, it was astonishing that, you know, you took on Mumbai Indians, you took on Kings Eleven, who are both playing fantastic cricket at the moment and pretty much thumped both of them. So, you know, you can't really ask for much more of this team towards the tail end of this tournament. They're really giving it their all to try and get into these qualifiers. Yep. Uh, I think we chased 196 into 17 overs and again did it against Punjab in I think 18 overs, I'm not sure. So that was a complete 
win a uh, victory that was uh, really happy to see that and i really hope that we back it off against kkr today so but i really don't want us to be chasing uh, targets in those range to be very honest i think the bowlers need to step up it's a huge game against kkr irres- irrespective of whatever happens in that punjab game i mean yes it's a very slight chance but i think one of my friend has calculated that uh, let me just read it out to oh here we go everyone. the maths calculations are back <laughs> uh, so assuming that punjab win in the final over and we bat second so we would need to be chasing uh, let's say if K- uh, kkr sets a target around 160 then we need to be chasing 160 in 14 overs to go ahead of uh, punjab on net run rate and if we bat first then we need to win by a margin of 62 runs or about to go ahead of kxip on net run rate so this is actually calculated by one of my friends who has a interest in statistics so i'm not sure what uh, How but you are but you are assuming Punjab wins the match against CSK, right? Yes, yes. After in the last this. over, <laughs> yeah, in the last over. So if KXIP could manage to win in the last over, then these are the. Then also you have a chance, you're saying. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And also, as Ahan said, the the loser of Delhi and RCB's NRR is going to get worse. So even that goes in our favor. And I don't want to say this to hurt Ahan, but I would really want DC to lose because they have a poor NRR as compared to RCB. So. It's going to be interesting three days. Well, Delhi losing, unfortunately, is not out of the imagination at the moment. Uh, we'll get on to that much later on, though. Um, moving on in the table. Speaking of everybody talking about the big game today, Kings Eleven versus CSK, and how much it's going to define everything that happens in the playoffs later. Uh, Anmol, Anmol, how has this past week been for you? You're back down to fifth. You know, only only just back down to fifth, but you know, it should be should be still a, a week where you can believe to get back into the top four. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would still believe that we can come above the line because uh, it's uh, pretty much uh, players are in the good form. Everyone is doing good batting, bowling, fielding. Uh, we, uh, I believe that we can win this match. I say to Neha, I want to say one thing to Neha. कि अभी ओवर नहीं हुआ है अभी तो जस्ट शुरू हुआ है एंड वी आर ट्राइंग हार्ड टू गेट टू द क्वालिफिकेशन एंड वी विल एंड ट्रॉफीज आर दिस ईयर बिकॉज I would say only one thing: Punjabi can't be pitched any harder. Why, Jack? Ne, um, wonderful. I'm so sure obviously, actually, Punjab will be really uh, getting out to win this match because it's like a do or die situation for them. If I'm not wrong, considering the all considering all the scenarios, so I'm sure they'll go out there to win this match. But we also want to end the series on a high, right? Despite well, well, Neha. I mean, like, I, I'm sure Anmol will attest to this as well. But are you guys going to be able to blow those whistles in the Gale Force that you're going to be uh, in today? Because uh, Anmol, Chris Gale, that uh, that innings of 99 in the last game. Uh, you know, he was obviously unlucky not to get that one run. Jofra got him at the at the last minute. But what an innings that was! Yeah, he was he was hitting sixes on the bouncers on the short balls everywhere. When he passed fifty runs or I think thirty runs or fifty runs, then you can ball him at any length at any line. He will going to hit the ball out of the boundary. That's his specialty. That's experience we wanted in the middle order. Uh, that Gail uh, given everyone was questioning that uh, why Gail on number three. I was also very upset that why Gail is not opening. But uh, when he saw, when I saw this first inning, cell number three, then I agree to the team management that he should play at number three. It's stronger than uh, middle order because Maxwell is also not performing. Puran can get us two or three minimum sixes. Uh, that only. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Chris Gale kind of reminds me of Zlatan Ibrahimovic a little bit. It's just that you know he's like this superhero of cricket that just doesn't seem to ever get old. Um, Naresh, what do you make of uh, Kings Eleven at the moment? They are obviously trying to make a, a push for this final qualifier position. Yeah, uh, actually, the most important aspect now coming in is Abu Dhabi is still playing true. You know, uh, Mumbai played the second game against Calcutta nearly uh, five weeks back, got 195, and we still see a 195, 185 happening, and the team batting second chasing it. Whereas Dubai and Sharjah are getting very difficult to get a good total. you know so that's going to make a difference and today again because kings 11 just played the last game there they couldn't defend it uh, you know a 200 is possible 
you know, today 200 yeah. is possible. But yeah, I still feel the team winning the toss would like to chase. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, mathematicians, I, I need you again, all of our mathematicians on here. Um, what do Kings Eleven need to do to, to secure qualification? Do they just need to win and then they're through? Or do, does it depend on other teams? I mean, ideally, if they win, I think they're through. Uh, unless, obviously, what Sanjit said, there's a massive net run rate swing from... Uh, Rajasthan, the winner of Rajasthan, KKR wins by some insane amounts and overtakes them on net run rate. And then Sunrisers still have to win because if Sunrisers don't win, then that still becomes uh, irrelevant because if Sunrisers don't win, they can still qualify. But ideally, if Kings Eleven win, then they should be through. So it's really just a win anyway. Yeah, but also I think the more the margin, the better for them. Margin, the margin would Yeah, the better the margin, the more the bigger margin, the, it increases their chances. It makes it yeah. more likely. But the good thing for them is that both Delhi and Bangalore got beaten so badly yesterday that their net run rates have fallen below below Kings Eleven already. So the winner can't get the loser cannot qualify ahead of Kings Eleven if Kings Eleven wins. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So Anmol, I'll give you the last word on uh, on Kings Eleven. Obviously, big big game today for you. Um, you know, we obviously know that you're confident that Kings Eleven can qualify for the last four. Are you still confident that this is Kings Eleven's year and they will be lifting the IPL trophy? Yeah, I definitely say that uh, this is Kings Eleven's year because uh, we have Chris Gale as a lucky charm for us. In first seven games, we have only one win, and uh, in last six, we have only one loss. That's a pretty much a good uh, stat we have, and uh, I possibly believe that uh, today we will have all the eleven men performing today. And that will be a great confidence for me that all of them are performing. Uh, and after that, uh, performing for all of them, for the nations and uh, for the IPL. But I prefer more IPL uh, to this match because this is uh, match we have every time uh, in many past years. We have only one match, our last match with CSK. And uh, every time we have to fight for the net, net run rates for fourth position. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Ahan, go for it. Uh, just like an interesting stat, Chris Gale has never actually won the IPL. Even though he's been so good in so many different teams, he's never won the IPL, nor has Kohli. So, I mean, those are two people who really want to win. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, is that is that because he played for RCB for all of these years, essentially? <laughs> um, well, you know, if we're, we're going to talk about uh, teams just performing absolutely out of their skins, the Sunrisers... My goodness me, they have performed like an absolute bat out of hell, like a phoenix from the ashes, and they have risen back through this table. Rakshit, what a comeback Sunrisers have made. Like already, oh. like uh, our skipper said that, you know, we'll, we'll perform to up, up to our range in our coming matches. You know, we'll, we'll make a comeback that like uh, we did in uh, 2016. Uh, even in 2016, uh, we were like three games to co qualify for the playoffs and we did it uh, in 2016. And we'll also repeat that in this, this season. We have, we have already have a good run rate and just winning this game and going to the playoff is, is, is the machine. Yeah, obviously, you had like a really bad loss last Saturday. Um, you know, a, a bad loss, which, you know, the other guys, uh, you know, shout out to Manish and Dipti, were, you know, absolutely horrified about that last loss. But like I said, an amazing comeback that's made you yeah. rise back up to fourth. A quick word about Riddhi Mansaha and his role in the, uh, in the batting to get uh, Sunrises back up to fourth. Yeah, uh, like um, for getting uh, for getting in a cane, uh, we have um, dropped the Johnny Barstow and we have got Saha in the lineup in the playing eleven. Uh, Saha has been absolutely proud of his job and also given the confidence to the team and to the fans that he's capable to open the innings. And when we have seen the innings with David Warner, uh, David Warner was playing slowly and one uh, Saha was just uh, going on hitting like he's uh, like Warner is supporting Saha. And he has played. He has played absolutely brilliant. And yeah, he he just did his job. We are looking forward for more innings from Saha. Well, you know, we obviously love to talk about wicket keepers uh, on this podcast. We've we've been talking about our wicket keepers mini league since uh, episode one, really. And uh, Riddhi Mansaha has really thrown uh, his hat into into the uh, the argument for that. I would argue. Ahan yeah, is a little you. bit skeptical. Um, but what do you think, Ahan? Ridiman Saha, is he, uh, is he back in the mix? He's not getting into our white ball side. He's, firstly, he's 
there's too many other better wide ball uh, batsmen he's definitely the best key i argue he's one of the best keepers in the world technically like keeping wise but i don't think he's got the game because as we've seen he can only bat at the top of the order the one in easy played he uh, in the middle order he batted at like 30 uh, at a strike rate of under 100 and he scored 30 runs so we have too many openers i don't see him getting there and i think obviously he's done well in terms of the last two three games i don't think he's a realistic shot and also his age he's been now what 32 33 we have so many youngsters coming in wicket keeping youngsters coming in who are making their names so let's see well i'm i'm i will move on to your wicket keeper a little bit later but i'll spare you i'll spare you that for now um so uh rakshit um what do the sunrisers need to do in order to qualify now again is it just a straight shootout for them that they just need to win their last game um uh, you know like uh, rashid has been always been a ex- factor for us uh, for sunrisers and also you know sandeep sharma has been doing brilliantly in the place of uh, bhuvneshwar kumar and also like uh, holder is uh, growing his caliber as an all-rounder like we have to continue this momentum uh, in the last game with mumbai indians and uh, then then only we can qualify for the playoffs Yes. and also i can yeah. expect some uh, great innings from uh, david warner like he is very confident and uh, uh, like we uh, will go to the playoffs he is very confident about the chance of going to the playoffs yes indeed david warner the uh, nawab of hyderabad let's see if he can uh, pull off another victory for them and get them into the uh, the last four now then um and also moving... one thing and also yes, one thing yes, i would like it. to um, uh thank meha for her support like i'm i'm cheering for csk <laughs> has everybody here well got done, a csk well done everyone show? i i didn't bribe anyone okay <laughs> I don't believe that. I think you've been sending CSK shirts to everybody in the post for this for this podcast. I think uh, look there you go is a picture of him with his CSK shirt on as well. I I feel like if uh, if CSK do everybody a favor on this podcast then everybody's going to take Neha out for some dosa idli uttapam later on in the week and stuff. So uh wow, lot of CSK please love. Please do, please do. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, lot of CSK love, lot of CSK love. Why not? Why not? Well, Uh oh god she's got one as well oh my lord yeah, honestly i feel left out now i don't have a csk shirt at home um so moving up the table now moving up the table good lord almighty do you remember everybody cast your minds back to week 1 of this podcast cast your minds back to when everybody was like looking at delhi capitals going wow wow look at these guys they're so good this is their year and we had you know the opening intro from our podcast being like feels good at the top of the table looking down at everybody else wow wow what musibat that they've come across now damn four losses in a row ahan what is going on with the delhi capitals four losses in a row and also a heavy heavy thrashing at the hands of the mumbai indians talk to me you know when i when i said it had been the first and second week some someone messaged me saying you're going to get this later and i was like nah delhi are going to do well they're going to they're going to keep this going here we are but i mean i don't know what to say even it's so disappointing like honestly we i said this i think we i said this on our group as well in 20 the only other team that has failed to qualify i mean the only team that has failed to qualify from 7 and 3 before is delhi in 2010 when they lost four in a row and didn't qualify on net run way if we lose against rcb god forbid that ever happens then we will be out again on net run it is so disappointing honestly our team looked so good it was everything was firing it just seems like everything has collapsed at the same time early in the tournament ir was scoring runs stoinis was scoring runs show was scoring runs uh, rabada was taking wickets nokia looked unplayable ashwin was bowling well aksar was bowling well everything just looked like it was clicking in place and then suddenly i don't know what's happened punts not scoring runs shreyas ayer is not scoring runs dhawan had two centuries now he's getting two ducks like what is going on then our bowling rabada has now 25 match- matches without a wicket and then he finds the best time to go two matches without without a wicket like how can it well, all yeah. fall apart at the same time Well I was going to say to you I think the the biggest the biggest problem now you're having obviously you've got an issue with the opening batsmen at the moment who are just not firing at all you know we talked about Prithvi Shaw at length uh, even Shikhar Dhawan now is uh, is struggling opening and uh, Ajinkya Rahane hasn't really made too much of a difference but Rabada and Nokia 
I mean, you know, the, you obviously said on, a, on the podcast a few weeks back that if you were to win the IPL this year, it would largely be because of them. But they're just not looking threatening at all at the moment. I read, uh, I read a joke somewhere on, uh, I think, Twitter yesterday that said the Rabada bowling now looks like the Rabada turned up to the World Cup last year after having aced the IPL. And even last year, he only played 12 IPL games and then, went to the, uh, then had the injury and went to the World Cup. And his bad form has started after 12 IPL games this year. So I'm starting to wonder if there's something like he can't play past 12 games in the IPL or, or what happens. But I think, honestly, he's too good a bowler. We all know he's up there with Jofra and Bumrah in terms of the ta- talent that the guy possesses in all formats. I think he, just well, he doesn't. Too- I'll tell you what he doesn't possess anymore, and that's the purple cap. He, he lost the purple cap to just breathe Bumrah. Yeah, but he's held it for... It, it's a marathon. He's held it for a while. He's, uh, I, I, I believe that him and Noki can't have three back-to-back bad games. Like, honestly, they've had two bad games. And you talked about getting thrashed by Mumbai. We didn't just get thrashed by Mumbai. We got thrashed by KKR. We got thrashed by Sunrisers. Then we got thrashed by Mumbai. It's not that we've lost... I don't mind losing games. If we had lost four on the bounce, like in the last over, that's fine. Like, like how Kings 11 were losing games in the beginning, that's fine. Because you're still, you're close, but then the thing is they're not even in the game. Like they lose the game in the first ten overs of the first innings. It's really frustrating. So I don't know now. I I don't know. I just hope I hope they can do something. You know, Ashish, you got six from the squad on the plane to Australia. Six from that squad. Six. From, who who are the six? So you have Shikhar Dhawan, um, uh, Rishabh Pant, Prithvi Shaw, Ashwin, Ajinkya Rahane. There's one more. Shreya Sahib. Shreya Sayer, the six of them on the plane. To and Ishant, if you want to count that as well. Mm. Yeah, if he can get his fitness back up. Um, well, you know, I think week by week, we had, uh, we had a scenario where we'd start talking about Kings Eleven. Uh, sorry, not Kings Eleven, about CSK. Um, and, you know, we'd open up the floor to everybody to dissect CSK. You know, I think now Dilly Capitals are going to have to get the CSK treatment. So, you know, let's open this up to everybody. Four losses in a row. They look a shadow of their former selves. I'm going to go to Neha first, just to give her the satisfaction of being able to do this to another team when we've been doing it to her team the entire year. So, Neha, what do you make of this transformation of, uh, of the Dilly Capitals? It's like Halloween night, the full moon's come out, and they're now back to the Dilly Daredevils from like five years ago. I think somebody in the podcast had mentioned earlier that could be one of the reasons where they could falter in the second half or as they get closer to the tournament is a psychological barrier that they have never been probably qualified and etc. And this could be maybe one of the reasons, like a very small percentage though, that you know they are probably getting nervous or whatever as they're getting closer to the tournaments. But we have seen in the earlier also, I can't exactly remember the stats and the team where team has done really well in the first half and in the second half, they have just faltered their chances and literally ran out of tournaments. I about the performance. I think lot has been already said who has performed how. I think Dhawan is very interesting. Two centuries and then having two ducks back to back. I might as well prefer somebody who is playing those ex, who is playing consistently with putting in and chiming in those extra 40, 50 runs each match rather than giving two hundreds and then giving two ducks like that. So, but who have uh, they got though? Who have they got? Who they can put at the top? Because Prithvi Shaw's not playing well. Shikhar Dhawan's not playing well. And Rahane is not playing well. So who's who's gonna open for them? I think Marcus Stoinis. <laughs> oh Lord Almighty! <laughs> he he, he no, was they... the big bash top scorer opening the bat, and I hope they don't do it. He should stay at six, but I'm saying that is an option if they want. No, I mean okay. they have no option. I think they have to go with uh, Shaw and everybody, but nobody is performing. And I, I mean even Ahan would agree. He doesn't know what is going wrong with the team, is and nothing is clicking together. All the top performers, nobody playing right now. So I think it happens in the game. Like, uh, worst you can do is just go on that very particular day. And as he said, in the matches or the losses were not really very close. They were like thrash, thrash, thrash. It, you know, even if you would have kind of lost in the last over by a few runs or something like that, you would have still felt better. The probably team is doing well, just not our day. But they are just getting thrashed badly. So yeah, everything going wrong for the team. Come on, Ahan, what are you doing? What is happening? Yeah, Ahan, I, call, I call Pant. I call Pant. I tell him. Uh, we Sanchez. want that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been wanting to hear week by week you sing the Rishabh Pant song, and he hasn't given you a reason for it. Uh, Sanjit, what's going on with the Delhi Capitals? I think the best thing for them is their last game against RCB is at Abu Dhabi. 
Uh, no, we've not won. I think yes. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think they have the game in Abu Dhabi. So the way we are talking that uh, one of the team has to be losing the game very badly. I, I don't see that happening. To be honest, it's going to be high scoring game, especially for Delhi. It's really good because the their batsmen have not been scoring runs uh, consistently, and I think this is the best time for them to to be back in their form. So um, it's really interesting on how they approach the game tomorrow. And I really don't see a one-sided game, to be honest. But I really see that Delhi Capitals would be doing much better with the bat. And yes, uh, Rabada and Nokia are uh, two, two top-class bowlers. And they are not going to be having another bad day. And I really see them doing really well. I'm not sure who is going to win. But Delhi Capitals are not going to play like they did in the last four games. Go for Ahan. Oh, the only thing is we haven't actually won a game in Abu Dhabi till now. And now we're going into the last game having to win it at Abu Dhabi. So... I'm really worried about that. But I mean, as Sanchit said, we've hit rock bottom. It can't go worse from there. It can only go up. So even if this like bat slightly better, it'll at least we feel like, oh my God, at least they're trying to bat. And the other good thing is, if there's one team you want to face at this moment in time, other than Delhi, it's RCB. Because both teams are on such horrendous runs of form. One has lost four, the other has lost three. They both are like, they, don't, they both are, have completely lost all their confidence. So, I mean, it's not the worst team to be coming up against at this moment in time. But then they've got two absolutely top quality, high pressure players. And it's basically, I think the game hinges around those two. If they fail, Delhi will win. If they do well, then I don't know how Delhi will win. Also, you would want Punjab and Hyderabad to lose, right? Against yeah, I mean, but CSK the, and good, yeah. the good thing about Delhi is it's still in their hands. They need to win one game and that. And the thing is, the thing about this game with Bangalore is whoever wins is not just qualified. They're qualified second. So they have yeah. two chances in terms of where they where to, to try and get into the finals. So it's a huge game. I, I don't know, man. I, I just... Well, look, I want to I wanna make your day a little bit worse uh, because I want to hand over the dissection of Dilly to your best friends at Mumbai right now. Uh, I want to hear from Naresh <laughs> to hear his thoughts on what is going on with the Delhi Capitals. No, I, 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 won't, I won't be harsh, but yeah, it's disappointing. You know, especially yesterday, Prithvi Shaw was very dis- He got two fours in that over. What was he trying to trend bolt, you know? You know, and, and I mean, that's yeah, Prith, 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 yeah. Prithvi Shaw is an ongoing debate on this show yeah. every week yeah. how disappointed we are with him. Yeah, and, and, and the point is... Uh, you know, Shreyas Iyer is undoubtedly a good captain. Uh, won't take that credit away from his good potential for the future. But is he uh, not having plan B? Is he not having that proper control in the field of what he wants to do, the changes? You know, that's little, especially against KKR, he, he seemed to be completely lost out, you know, especially when the power play went for really big score. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the one thing. But uh, most important is. Uh, are they always wanting to chase a big total? You know, even if they're batting first, do they want to set 180, 190 and not getting, you know, uh, uh, reading the conditions well? Like yesterday, even a 160 would have been a good total. You know, but if they were, they were having 180, 190 in mind on a Dubai pitch, now it's, uh, you know, so those are few things uh, they need to uh, work out. And probably Hetmeyer can be utilized a little better. You know, maybe if a wicket falls early, send him at three. You know, instead of Shreya Sayer, and probably he can come at four. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, the it's been disappointing batting, to be honest. Uh, Mumbai just ran through them, you know. And, and of course, you predicted a Mumbai uh, Delhi final as yeah, well. Yeah, and I'm so. feeling disappointing because of that, you know, because, <laughs> you know, and, and as everyone has been saying, it's the, it's the way they are losing the games, you know. Uh, that's. Uh, oh, I wouldn't, and, you know, I wouldn't feel too bad, Naresh. I predicted that Jedi Super Kings were going to win the IPL this year. Uh, Ahan, <laughs> uh, go for it. Uh, there's a couple of things. I think there's a general perception going around right now that, uh, I mean, this has been known for a while, but it's very highly Ricky Ponting involved in terms of leading the team. And Shreyasai is a good captain. Yes, he makes some good decisions, but there's a perception going around that he's kind of, he goes onto the field with a plan he's discussed with Ponting and he's not really ready to change it, even though it might be going wrong, like in terms of where the overs they want to bowl, especially in that KKR game when Narayan came out to bat, the logical thing would have been uh, to bring back either Avada or Nokia to bowl one over and take Narayan out and then you can bowl your spinners. But he fed him Ashwin who then uh, went after him and that completely changed the, uh, the tone of the game. And I think uh, the other thing about uh, yeah, Shreya Sai and the batting in general is that they need to like, 
they need to take a bit more responsibility, but they also need to play freely. Like Ponte used to tell them that if you lose tomorrow, you're out. If you if you win, you're you're through. So you might as well just go and express yourselves, do what you can do best, and just hope that it comes off and you get it. And the worrying thing is, Shreyas Iyer, after two or three games, he's come out and said, like yesterday, I was watching his post-match interview, and he said that um, we we're not really sure what we're not really sure what a good score is. It's very difficult to read the conditions. No other captain says that at a post. Yeah, it's not what you want to hear from a captain. You can't read the conditions. Like, I was like, what? And also in a couple of tosses, he said, we want to bowl first because it's a slow wicket, which doesn't make sense. If it's a slow wicket, it's going to get slower later. It's going to get even slower. So it's going to be even tougher to bat. So surely you would want to uh, bat first, make the runs and then take advantage of the slow wicket. I don't know. It just seems like the whole team right now is muddled. They don't know what's going on. They're all, they're all like... I just hope Ponting tells them that this is it. If you win here, you're through. If you lose, you're out. And then just go play freely. Come on, fun. I'll sing. Well, it look, too. you know, let's uh, let, let's also let let's discuss one one thing real quick. Um, you've got KL Rahul, you've got Sanju Samsung, you've got Ishan Kishan, and now you've got Riddhi Saha coming up in in the in the rear view. Yeah, he might yeah. be at the back, but he's coming up in the rear view. Rishabh Bunt, um, he's obviously going to Australia. He's, uh, I think he's in one of the squads. I can't remember which one. He's on the test squad. He's on the he's test, in the test squad. squad. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, we've been wanting you to sing the Rishabh Bunt song uh, on this podcast for ages. He hasn't given you a reason to. Um, what's going on with Rishabh Bunt? Okay, I think this, this is a much deeper question than like, I will take a while to answer this whole question. But I think the problem basically, is he's not been handled very well by the Indian team management generally in terms of they're trying to get him to conform to the norms of Indian cricket and treat him like they treat every other player. But it, the thing is, every now and then you come across a player who's not the same. He doesn't fit the same stereotype as all our players. He's very different. His mindset, the way he thinks about the game, the way he plays is very different from what Let's say a Kohli, a B, like not a Kohli, Rahul, Rohit, uh, Manish Pandey. These are all very similar. Shreya Sire even. They're all similar players in the way they approach the game. Rishabh Pant is not like that. He gives us something completely different. And I don't think, I mean, he's not helped himself by the way he's performed for India. He's done really well in the iPad before this season. But he's not helped himself by the way he's performed against in, as the Indian team. But I think they've also not really... Yeah, he was batting at four in the World Cup after not World Cup semi final after not being in the squad to start. I mean, he I think he's also a bit unsure about what his role should be, and that has been the biggest problem of the season because given this situation that they've been thinking or uh, they they put him in, he's now trying because he's batting at four. So he's trying to build an innings like be twenty of twenty and then explode, which is not his game. That's not how he plays. He comes in, he intimidates the bowlers and goes after them, which he's not doing. And I think that's why, uh, as Nareesh said, I think they could utilize Hetmeyer. At four or three, maybe because Pant's success as an IPL batsman has come batting at five. He scored 650 runs batting at five. So I don't, I think maybe if we put him at five and maybe put Hetmaya up ahead of him, that makes it Pant at Stoinis at five and six. And that could actually be beneficial for Delhi in, terms, in the long run. I just feel like we need one win. We've got on this like losing mindset. You need one win to turn it around. If we get one win against RCB, I feel like the whole mindset will change. They'll get in back into confidence and then they can take that momentum through the tournament. So it's all about that one win. And uh, a few weeks ago, I asked you what your minimum uh, expectations were and you said to reach the final. Uh, are you sticking with that? Yeah. If you don't reach the final, it's a, it's a disappointment. Yeah, you know, Ashish, this stage of the tournament, you want to see a higher level of competitiveness. But unfortunately, you know, the last few games, the margin of defeats are, you know, kind of uh, being worrisome. No. Well, speaking of defeats, uh, you're not alone, Ahan, up there in the table. Because uh, if we move up to the second position, we have Royal Challengers of Bangalore. And they have had three losses in a row. Um, uh, you know, along with Dilly's four losses in a row. Three losses in a row for RCB. Um, it could be argued that, you know, De uh, Delhi and uh, RCB are kind of letting everybody else back into the race, really. But... Uh, Varnata, what do you make of this last week for, um, for RCP? Honestly, I don't know what's happening with the team currently. The team looks decent. Bowling is also decent. But batsmen are not working at all. It's like they're just practicing on the field. Like yesterday, if you see Gurkirat, I don't know what was his uh, duty to come here and do. But just not that was not happening at all. Then opening was good in the previous match yesterday. Of course, Dave was not, I mean, he was out early in the power play. But then Josh is good. Dave is good. If the opening partnership is good tomorrow, hopefully we have something 
better score in the power play. Then in the middle order, I think it's all dependent on Virat Kohli and AVT players. Either one should work out. If both, it's like bale bale for us. But then none of them, then of course we are. I don't know, our team is so dependent on the AVT players and Virat Kohli that, you know, if one match they don't, you know, they don't play, it's like we are just hanging like this. <laughs> And uh, even if you see uh, the last second match where we lost, but then it was a pretty much, you know, we were happy with the performance because with, without Virat Kohli and A.B. De Villiers, we scored 165. That's pretty much decent. So if Virat Kohli and A.B. De Villiers start hitting, we can reach 180 and 190. So okay. yeah, that's pretty much... Okay. Yeah, it's obviously still in your hands too. The uh, the Dilly RCB game is pretty much just a, a straight knockout now uh, for the both of you guys. Um, Dilly obviously are the ones I think who are having you know the, the slightly worse form at the moment coming into that game. So what's your hopes for that game? So now currently our fate is in our hands. It's all depend what they go out and play to, uh, tomorrow in Abu Dhabi. And again, one change I would like to see is. Uh, Shivam Dube coming in in, in place of uh, Gurkirat and rest remains the same. Again, we should have the good opening partnership and then the middle order. Bowling department is quite decent currently. So, no much complaints with the bowling department. But honestly, I don't have nothing to say right now. I'm so tense till tomorrow. It's like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Even we are under pressure, even Delhi is under pressure and both going to make the mistakes tomorrow because both teams are under pressure. Okay. Um, I didn't want to talk about this one, Atta, because I kind of think it's a non-issue, but I feel like it's a big thing that's happened this week. And, you know, we are the, uh, we are the Bharat Army podcast, so we talk about everything on it. Um, I want to ask you about Virat Kohli and his behavior on the pitch. And in particular, his behavior towards a certain Surya Kumar Yadav. We obviously saw Virat Kohli kind of, yeah, he didn't say anything. He just kind of, made his presence known to Surya Kumar Yadav, who was batting and just kind of got a little bit up in his face, let's just say. Um, what did you make of that moment? Honestly, I don't know his regression and aggression. You know, sometimes people take it in a wrong way. And uh, especially nowadays, it's like everybody is against Kohli. I don't know for what thing, but sometimes it's just irritating to see like that. He's, come on, he's your Indian captain. You cannot say, abuse him like that, no matter what he does. That's his kind of attitude, you know, uh, of showing angerness sometimes. I know he abuses and he does all of stuff, all, but then it's all part of the game. Abusing is not right, but he, if you see now, he has controlled much, you know, on his angerness and everything on the field. Earlier, he used to be like very much angry on uh, on the teammates, but now it's all fine. And coming to Suri Kumar Yadav, I don't know, it was nothing, uh, you know, that big what uh, audiences and the fans made it or the fuss out of it. It was nothing that big, which, you know, Twitter and all was, you know, coming out with that flow that Virat Kohli was doing this to Suri Kumar. Actually, I'll take it on the positives. He might be testing him that this is what everyone is going to face in Australia. So trying to. Keep in mind that, okay, I have an alternate available in case required, you know. So. <laughs> Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Maybe I was the Akko and he's like, I to I. <laughs> maybe, knows? maybe, yeah, Ahan. I think that whole Surya Kumar thing was blown out of proportion. They both wanted to win. They both went for it. They were, uh, Kohli is known to get, uh, try to get under people's skin. I mean, that's not a bad thing. The Australians have done it for years and they won doing that. So Kohli was just trying, because he realized that Surya Kumar was in a rhythm. So he was trying to break it in any way possible. And uh, it's fine. It's in the heat of the competition. If, someone, if he tries to do that, if, if it's up to Surya Kumar's mental toughness and his state of mind to be able to counter that. If he can't do it, then he shouldn't be in the Indian team anyway. So it's good for him that he managed to score 70 in that situation and win, win the game. And I thought he dealt with it perfectly. Like he waited, he stared back and then he walked off when he, when he felt like. So it was fine. Perfect. I actually yes, indeed, like yeah. the way how, how Naresh put it, probably tomorrow in more international matches and etc. He might have to face all of that. So Kohli's like, let's start here itself. Yeah, and, and I think we have seen worst, worst of this, right? More than, uh, you know, situations like Mich- Michel Stark versus Pollard. And even Bravo and Pollard get into that when they are playing against each other. So, you know, I think it's part of the game nowadays. And sp- um, especially when there were no words spoken, it's fine. Gambi and uh, Virat Kohli Gambi, also. yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, we've had quite quite a few uh, of those little moments. So, you know, uh, Sky, Sky and Virat are the next ones in the line. So, that then takes us to the very top 
of the table. Ladies and gentlemen, two teams. Can we all log off? <laughs> no, no, you can't log off. You're going to have to listen to all of this. Um, two teams this year, ladies and gentlemen, RCB and Delhi Capitals, came knocking on the front door of Antilia and said, this is our year. And twice now, they've been thrown off the front lawn because the Mumbai Indians are reigning supreme over this year's IPL. Naresh, it's turning into quite a special year for Mumbai Indians this yeah. year. Yeah, uh, you know, they have been in such situations earlier, Mumbai Indians, of what Delhi and Bangalore are going through. You know, they have to make a comeback into the tournament. Obviously, they've had a dream year in 2013 when they went on to win also. Uh, so, comparatively, uh, it seems it's a good uh, year for them. Uh, they have progressed through the tournament and have been there on the top. Uh, yeah, before the tournament, you know, all those uh, superstitious believe that they have won only the odd years. And I think Rohit Sharma replied to that, that 2020 is a, the most odd year. You know, so, Very much. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think it's all around, uh, you know, they, they've, they've got their, all, the, all the batsmen performing. They've got their bowlers doing well. Boomer had a little bit of a rough start. But uh, yesterday, he uh, not only won the Purple Cat, he has the best economy rate also now. Uh, what's uh, what's been heartening in the last week has been um, Ishan Kishan filling those big boots of Rohit Sharma opening, and and that's where I think the debate now comes in of uh, the pressure on Rishabh Pant. You know, though we haven't seen Ishan Kishan uh, keep, but uh, with the domestic season starting in January and another IPL in next six months, if he's uh, doing well, he's one thing is for sure. He's now permanent in the first eleven of Mumbai. He didn't start off this year in the first eleven. You know, he came in in the fourth game that uh, super over against RCB where he got a 99. So one thing is for sure, he's permanent in Mumbai, at least to start off. And then uh, a consistent performance, uh, you can't ignore him. Neither you can ignore uh, Surya Kumar Yadav. Well, uh, just talking, let's talk about Surya Kumar Yadav for a little bit, because obviously, you know, we, all, we are all here representing, you know, our, our IPL teams and stuff. But I think with all of us, our loyalty is always to India. one place, one place only. So, you know, let's talk about Surya Kumar Yadav for a minute, you know, and just talk about how he just seems to continually get looked over for the India team. We had Ravi Shastri, obviously, tweeting in the middle of the week as well, saying, be yeah. patient. Um, how patient does he need to be? Uh, honestly, he's also now about 30, a little about 30, you know. So, with three World Cups coming, I think he'll be there in the mix. That puts pressure on Shreya Sayer because, honestly, Virat Kohli, when he started, he was around the number four position and I think he's flexible. If he gets someone who's doing well, he may go down to four and get Surya Kumar at three for the Indian team. So, that puts pressure on Shreya Sayer. You know, so this actually this this tour of Australia is going to define his future, Surya Kumar's future. If you go to see, because they're going with good set of batsmen, and if anyone fails, uh, you know that there may be some harsh decisions coming up because the T20 World Cup is next year this time. You know, so they would they would uh, want a, a consistent team who are doing well in that format, and Surya Kumar has proved it this year. But uh, yeah, I think uh, just a matter of few months, uh, he'll definitely be in the, in the, in the game. But yeah, and, uh, with Ravi Shastri's comment was very clear that he, they, they would have had a long debate around Surya Kumar in the team. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, obviously we, we have quite long debates uh, over, over that wicketkeeper position. And like you've yeah. alluded to, obviously Ishan Kishin obviously is playing absolutely out of his skin at the moment. Obviously the team are without Rohit Sharma for the time being, but they haven't really missed him in these past few games. Yeah, he had, and in, even yesterday, uh, Hardik didn't play. He, he would, wouldn't have been required as it is because he's only batting, he doesn't bowl. And uh, uh, Pollard is doing very well with the captaincy, you know, and uh, the, the team, team is respecting him. Most important, you know, he's getting Jayant Yadav in the 13th game and giving him the ball uh, in the power play off spinner. You know, so uh, I think everything is going positive for the team. Uh, Bumrah, you know, when Bumrah strikes uh, early, he's a different bowler for the rest of the inning. You know, and that's that's what's working. Yeah, Trent Bolt has been a little uh, limited as far as the depth is concerned in a couple of games. Uh, especially against Punjab, uh, you know, his, his death bowling got Punjab back into the team, which ultimately went into the, uh, you know, double super over, which we never experienced. But yeah, I think overall they're doing well. Uh, yesterday's change of Cotton Isle uh, should remain because current conditions suit his bowling more than Pattinson. 
So yeah, and Rahul Chahar, I think I'm sure he would have been part of the risk spinner discussion for Australia, uh, though we are happy for uh, Chakravarti to make it. But there were so many risk spinners who have done well in this IPL. Sure. And I think that actually, you know, when you're looking at the way that Mumbai Indians are playing at the moment, yeah. everything kind of looks to be headed in one very predictable direction. Obviously, I asked you uh, a few weeks back as well, last week, I think it was, uh, what's your minimum requirement? And, um, you know, you obviously said that to, to lift the IPL trophy this year is pretty much where the Mumbai Indians kind of see their end target for most years. Are you sticking to that? Yeah, I'm sticking to that now. I mean, I had till last week I was at Delhi Mumbai final, but now I think Mumbai should lift it because what we saw last week happened. And yeah, as uh, you know, the Kolkata uh, team would be disappointed. We haven't seen Chris Lynn, Chris Lynn at all because uh, you know the way Quinton de Kock has opened the innings. So he himself would be feeling very frustrated, Chris Lynn, and obviously Kolkata would be feeling that they shouldn't have released him. But that's that's how the game goes, you know. So. You need to sure. play your best winning combination and that's what Mumbai is sticking to. Sure. I mean, look, everybody else on this podcast now, I want, to do, I want to do a show of hands now and I want you to dig deep, to look inside your souls and to be as honest as you possibly can with yourselves. Who here thinks that Mumbai Indians will not win the IPL this year? One person <laughs> two, two other people okay uh, ahan what what makes you think that they won't win this year considering how dominant they are at the moment <laughs> i think uh i think it's just that they've made it too comfortably to the top top like it can work both ways i mean they can it could it could be a good thing that they made it so comfortable but also like all these guys who are going to make it having scrapped and made it through like with so much they're all going to be like quite intense and quite hungry to try and dislodge Mumbai Indians. And all it takes is one bad game. Like, if they make it to the finals. And, and Mumbai have been beaten, right? Enough teams have beaten Mumbai this IPL. Kings Eleven has beaten them. Rajasthan has beaten them. Uh, Chennai have beaten them. Basically, like, three teams who are near the bottom actually have beaten them. And even, uh, I can't remember who the... F- RCB. RCB won RCB, the yeah, RCB won the Super Over. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, four teams have beaten them. It's not like Mumbai have been undefeated. And they've beaten them with Rohit Sharma in. So I just think that, uh, you know, the more, um, all it takes is one, day off in the final, it takes one great innings by someone from the opposition and they can lose. And I think if Rohit Sharma is not there, I don't see them winning for the, fin- the, 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 the finals. Despite because, how Ishan Kishan has played this year. You yeah, still I, say- I think Rohit Sharma is more in terms of a psychological and mental perspective of the game. He's like, at the end of the day, yes, Ishan Kishan has played well, but if you put Ishan Kishan there, or if you put Rohit Sharma there, who's going to say a bowler more? It's Rohit yeah, Sharma. Yeah, but yeah, and that's the unfortunate, but that's, that's why I said, you know, with, because of his injury, I think Ishan has done well. They had yeah, an no, option no doubt, to... No doubt. Yeah, they had an option to drop Pattinson, get in Chris Lynn on the top, and get a, a third seamer from the uh, Indian origin. You know, they had Dawal uh, Kulkarni sitting, they have Mohsin Khan, who's a new left-armer from the domestic cricket. So they had that option. But they, they either they have promoted themselves or Ishan Kishan has lifted his hand, give me a chance, we don't know. But he has done well. Yes, he's, he's, he's filled in yeah, well. Yeah, 100%, 100%. But I just think at the end of the day, like crunch situations, experience comes in. And you can, I mean, I, I would hate for this to happen. But let's say RCB are playing the finals against Mumbai and um, Virat Kohli or AB De Villiers has an insane game. I mean, it's all it, that's all it takes for them to lose the game. So at the end of the day, the finals are very unpredictable and I just don't think Mumbai will win this year. Fair enough. Well, at the moment, the Mumbai Indians are looking absolutely dominant. It could look like they, this could be another year for them. Uh, and if they do win, that will be five titles that they have under their belt. Five titles. So yeah, wow, Mumbai Indians, quite the dynasty. Uh, Sanjit, uh, CSK uh, are taking on Kings Eleven Punjab. Have you any updates for me of what's going on at the game right now? CSK have won the toss and they are bowling first. And uh, I think even in the chat box, we are seeing the num- names of the changes. So it's good that CSK are bowling first and it's going to be an interesting game. But it's really diff- difficult times to be... Uh, I'm not sure what to say, but... Uh, I think Watson should have played. Uh, I mean, the reports saying that uh, it could be his last game. So it's really unfortunate that he misses out. But uh, let's see what happens. I'm really nervous about this match. Ahan. I think the big thing also is that Kings 11 have done a couple of big things. They finally gl- dropped Glenn Maxwell, which is huge to drop him in the last game of the tournament for Nisham. 
And I think Kings XI have picked their squad assuming they were chasing, which they are not now. Because if you look at their squad, they've got... They've dropped Arshdeep for Mayank, which means a bowler for an opening batsman. And they've dropped uh, Maxwell for Nisham. So, their bowlers are... It's going to be Jordan, Shami, Bishnoi, Ashwin. And Nisham has to bowl four because they have no other bowling options. So, uh, they could come under Huda. serious... Yeah, Deepak, Deepak Huda, Huda. But I mean, spin, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very different from having five bowlers and then having Maxwell to fill in as a sixth... And Maxwell and Huda to fill in if they want. But they, 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 they need to now... I mean, now that they're playing... In, Another batsman, KL and all have to bat at a really high strike rate. Ensure they get a 180-200 to basically bat CSK out of the game. Yeah, I think probably guys. that's the reason with Mayank also in and uh, instead of Ashdeep is they, they are aiming for a 200 on this Abu Dhabi track. I think honestly they picked their game, their team, hoping they won the toss and chased. Because if they, if you chase, then they, with that batting line, line, line up, they could chase anything. But now it's up to see how they defend. Uh, Neha, feeling confident hearing that, uh, hearing that lineup? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm pretty sure where wherever is Anmol, I, I can't see him right now. Anmol has actually had to leave to go to an NDTV interview. Uh, okay. You know, Bharat <laughs> Army all over across all, all platforms worldwide. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, everyone. So, uh, yeah, yeah, carry I, on. I haven't seen the squad, but whatever Sanchit has mentioned, Faf is in, Watson is out, Tahir in. I don't know why Santner is out though. Maybe because they had to get Tahir in. And one more change. I think it's it's a good thing. I mean, uh, it looks like a good score, and we are going to chase again, bowl first. We have been restricting the teams to a decent total in the RCB match as well. So, I think it looks okay for us. We're going to win this one. Confidence, confidence. And then obviously the later game uh, today is uh, KKR versus uh, Rajasthan Royals. So if I can bring uh, Sanchit and Abhijit uh, back into the podcast for a moment. Sanchit, obviously the, uh, the shivers going down your spine because, you know, it's quite a, it's quite a scary time for a Rajasthan Royals fan. But uh, what do you think is going to happen in that game later? The best thing to do is just to win the toss. But uh, if we lose the toss, then I think... Uh, the nerves would start kicking in. I mean, we have been defending really poorly. And I think KKR have have been batting really well in the last couple of games, so bearing certain performances. So I think that if we lose the toss, then it's about time that someone from uh, the fast bowling lineup, maybe Kartik Tyagi, I think he has been really good in well, when he started the tournament. I think he has to start taking wickets. Uh, even if he goes for runs, it's okay. But I think if we start taking wickets, partnering with Joff Raj, and I think that could be a really key for us. And especially with Ben Stokes coming back in form and bowling consistently now, I think uh, I think that was the first time he bowled four overs in the last game. So that's really positive signs for us. So if we could just uh, look to take early wickets, and I think that should be the key. But uh, the bare minimum, I think, is to just win the toss and chase we don't want the nerves to be kicking in, I think. It's going to be an important game, irrespective of what happens in this uh, afternoon match. Yeah, Abhijit, uh, what do you think? Big game, obviously, for KKR as well. First of all, first of all it's nice from Sanchit uh, that he told uh, uh, KKR betting is really good because uh, it's very uncommon for someone to say KKR, I mean, appreciate KKR's batting. So, yeah, KKR betting has been good in last 10 overs. So, and we have been uh, batting first in last few matches. So, as Sanchit said, I would also uh, want KKR to win the toss and uh, maybe chase uh, for a change. And uh, I saw in KKR live, uh, Andrew Russell was practicing and he was hitting sixes. So, if he's going to come in, it will be really interesting to see whom, who, whose place he will take because uh, Loki Ferguson is undroppable at the moment and Pat Cummins is uh, our number seven batsman. So, yes, and uh, uh, it will be a good idea to uh, change against uh, Rajasthan Royals because Sanju and uh, all, even our old Robin Uthap, everyone has got into form. And uh, it is, uh, if we have to defeat RR, then we have to restrict their batting to a good number and we should look to change only. So, that is only way. Uh, I, even I will be uh, nervous if KKR don't win the toss as Sanchez. So, we are pretty much similar at the moment. So, yeah, that's it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, all to play for this year in the IPL as we approach the uh, the playoffs, which will soon be upon us. So the next few games, we will all be glued to our TV sets. Uh, and with that, our time is up. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this week on the Bharat Army podcast, everybody. 
uh, no doubt, as, uh, as it was Halloween yesterday, we're all going to be as scared as everybody else that our teams don't make it into that final four. Um, but still, you know, all to play for, and we'll see if anybody can thwart the Mumbai Indians. We shall see. We shall see, eh? Uh, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Like, share, subscribe on all of our platforms, and we'll see you next week. Peace. <laughs>